Uh, good afternoon, YouTube. Um, sorry, just uh, sharing a quick one today. Uh, just before I get started, I want to mention that I'm, I'm not a software developer, so if I get any of this wrong, uh, that's that's why. <laughs> uh, I just like to muck around with things, and um, uh, one of the things I really enjoy doing is just solving little problems around my house, like maybe something doesn't display some data that I want it to, so I'll... Uh, you know, try and solve that problem myself if I can um, without, you know, I'd make every effort not to involve a third party if I can. Um, anyway, look, uh, one of the things I was looking for is um, I want to build a dash. Uh, I've got Docker containers and I've got virtual machines and I've got other uh, other devices like all my charges and, and um, power systems and whatnot. And I want them all to show up in one dash, but Node-RED's just not doing it for me. So uh, I've taken a little foray into uh, Blazor, um, really impressive Blazor, I've had a little bit of experience in the past with uh, ASP.NET in the .NET framework days, um, and they had this excellent feature that would scaffold a database for you, give you classes, and then it would build you a bunch of views, uh, which would shorten the amount of development time significantly, so it was, it was excellent. Um, the CRUD generation feature in the new uh, ASP.NET Core it just isn't as good. It, it gives you very basic pages, but they're they're well, they're just useless in, in my opinion. Um, hang on, my cat is meowing. Will you be quiet? Mm, irritating little poop. Um, anyway, look. Uh, so what I was hoping to do is use something like Mudblazer, um, and I was thinking about it today that you know, like one of the and I'm probably going to get this wrong, but one of the emphasis in uh, Blazor is that the components have a lifetime or a life cycle and uh, and the aim is to make reusable code, right? And um, so what I've been learning from this is that um, uh, that sounds all good and well, except if you look at this example and we'll show the code, uh, this is taking a list of items um, and those items are that's a, that's a list or an enumerable collection, whatever the case may be, of a particular class. And then you're getting, you get this is a little lambda expression here that gets the property of age, in this case, status, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, which means that it's effectively bound to this class. So this view isn't really reusable, uh, which that, yeah, that kind of means you bloody put it in the bin. If you want to display it in more than one place, um, you, you can because you could just reference whatever this. So let's say, for example, that this was called people. Then you would just be able to put a blazer object somewhere called people, and and this grid would show up. Now that's nice, but what I'm really after is actually having this be universal, uh, and I don't want it to be bound to a class. Uh, and you say, well, obviously there's a name, there's an age, and there's a status. So what would you bind these to? So, well, that's that's what we're going to try and solve. Uh, and I think I've come up with a reasonable solution. It doesn't look as nice as this, but I haven't implemented the theme or anything. So uh, let's go and have a look at that. So this is... Uh, You'll just forgive me for what I <laughs> for what this app's called. What I actually did was made it so that if you paste in a class here, it would produce the uh, the output, uh, which seemed like a good idea, but uh, didn't end up with the result that I was looking for. So I've got a view called people, um, and you say, well, this is just a repeat of what we just looked at. Uh, to a certain extent, it is a repeat of what we just looked at. But this list, even though it's called persons, <laughs> I don't know if the plural of person is not persons, but whatever. Uh, this is actually not bound to any particular type. It looks like it is, but it isn't. Uh, and we've got a first name. There is actually a last name here, and there's a, there's a reason that we can only see the first name. So let's just see if this works. Oh, yeah, that works. Cool. So let's go Bob. Yep, yeah, Bob works. Excellent. So for all intents and purposes, it appears to work. I have not implemented the edit, um, and you'll see why shortly, but uh, otherwise, cool, we've got, oh, we've got sorting and, sorting and filtering, everything appears to work. 
But most importantly, there is not a class associated with this index. Um, because if we want these items to be truly uh, universal or truly reusable, um, we don't want them bound to a class. So this is instead, this is bound to an object. Uh, and what we're doing is we're passing in a type, right? And then we iterate through the values uh, or the properties of the type to populate. But that means that we can hand it any type we want. And then this one grid, which is sortable, it's filterable and it's searchable, can be used for any class that we pass it. So I'll show you how I got to that. Now I'm sure I'm sure that any of the software development boffins who may potentially watch this are probably telling me you noob, you don't know how to do X, and and I don't. Uh, this is a uh, uh, this is new to me. I'm trying to learn it, and yeah, if someone's got a better way of doing this, I would love to hear it. But I'll jump over to show you what my implementation looks like um, and how I achieve this. Right, so we're in Visual Studio, my project is running, um, hopefully, uh, I'm not sure if that's being recorded or not, I think it is, hopefully the uh, Chrome screen is also being recorded, but let's, um, let's jump to the program and have a look. So I have my generic list razor, now as you saw in, uh, in the output, um, we've got Persons is actually the page because that's the page we're on. Um, this generic list is appearing as an object uh, is, is being rendered inside of the page person. So let's um, let's jump to that, which is people.razor. There it is. There's our generic list and it's being passed in a value type, which is the class person. So um, I've de defined the class person here and you'll see some stuff in here that doesn't you normally don't see and that is this attribute information here. So given that um, I don't know what object is going to get passed in, I can't just use booleans uh, to say I want to render a certain item or I don't want to render an item. So instead what I've done is I've appended this should render, or should render true, should render false. Uh, to render or not to render. Um, so then we jump back to our generic list. So we've got our, there's our class. The generic list doesn't see class at all. Like it doesn't it doesn't know about person, right? Um, what does know about person is the people page, uh, and it knows of this class and it's passing it as a type. So cool, happy days. Um, now. I suppose the bit that I haven't implemented here at the moment is that how am I passing it a list? I'm, I'm not. Um, I figure what I'll do is I'll make function calls to a service that says I have the type person and I want a list or I have the type person I want an individual person maybe maybe something along those lines. But uh, you can handle it with a handful of um, with a handful of services. So anyway, generic list. So this is a Mudblazer template. Um, so you just do. Whatever it is you do, you add the service, you add the CSS and the JavaScript, and, and uh, everybody's happy. Um, I've never used Mudblazer before, so this is a first for me. Um, so you'll have to forgive me and bear with me because, as I said, I'm not a software developer, so I will very likely use the wrong terms. Uh, our list is a list of items. So if we go down to where that is declared, we have an enumerable type items. So we have not made a list or an enumerable collection of a class, we've made an enumerable uh, type list. And we've, this type is cast as whatever, you know, whatever we passed into the uh, generic list. Oh my goodness sakes, will you be quiet mate, please? Sorry, the cat is demanding. Um, he can see the bottom of his food bowl and it must be the end of the world. Um, a little bit dramatic. Uh, anyway, so um, we've got a function here. Sorry, the, the filter. So this is a, effectively a method call or a function call. Um, and it's going to call, I'm going to strangle that cat. Um, it's going to call this filter function down here. So just like before, we do not return the type person. Instead, we are going to return a type instead. Um, this is very, uh, this la whole Lambda expression here was a chat GPT thing. I would have done this per line because I'm a noob. Um, but let's go back up to the top. So we have a filter function and the filter function uh, passes in information from our search string. 
um, and here we go on the set that's only a it's only returning a string to a function down here so there we are on the search string changed um, that's going to get called every time the string changes well actually it doesn't it seems to only happen when it presses enter but um, I'm not sure I'm not sure why that is maybe it's because it's value changed and it's bound to the value of search string perhaps not sure but anyway it, it, it works you type in a search string and you press enter and then uh, this gets updated and that triggers this to be updated so you know it's it's working um, jumping down here to what populates the actual table uh, these are the headers uh, of each of the columns um, so again not bound to the class bound to this type and then we get the property of the type and that's what sets the header now this is where those other attributes come in so if you say I bet I don't do that let's put that back um, so if for example you have uh, annotated the first name with yep should be rendered it gets rendered if the annotation doesn't exist it gets rendered if the annotation does exist and it's false it does not get rendered so we can see, uh, uh, let me just, uh, I really hope, sincerely hope that you can see Chrome whenever I'm popping it up. So we can't see first name here. If I go back to the person and I change this to true. And I reset. Uh, you have to forgive us, the, uh, this computer is not not the most modern thing in the world um, probably asking a bit much of it with all the crap that I've got going on come on and we jump over to what's it, people or what's it, people look we got a last name they're all smiths they could be does I suppose couldn't they they're all smiths so yeah the next thing I do when I implement is this edit in in line which is going to be complex because um, Obviously, like this isn't associated with an entity framework backend or anything at the moment. Uh, I'd like it to be, and there's going to have to be a service to make that happen, which is which is going to be interesting because when you hand back a complex collection uh, from entity framework, you might include child elements, which we're not going to be able to do here because the list is a generic list of literally generic objects. So what we'll have to do is identify them after the fact with their foreign keys um, and, and maybe go and get them separately. Um, like I don't see that as a huge, I don't see that as a huge problem. So now something I didn't check is it has actually broken the, uh, oh no, that's working. So I wonder why it won't. There we go. Oh, of course it's showing them all because they've all got the last name Smith. I was just about to say I think that's broken something, but it hasn't. Um, I'm going to go and strangle that cat. And then I won't strangle him because we love him to death, but he is an irritating little pup. Um, yeah, that, like, I'm not sure exactly um, how else to explain it other than um, what I've already said. Effectively, we can populate the row template by using the get properties. Um, and then yeah we can edit the row and we can populate the row using the get value function here so it's been cast as the type uh, of person here and that means that these will they will be populated with the properties of that particular uh, element type so that makes this truly reusable because now I could you know, potentially add in um, like a different class. So um, it won't work directly here because I've, I'm populating this right there with the on initializing. So ordinarily you wouldn't do that. Ordinarily uh, you would take the type. So like, you know, T, like you submit this to a service somewhere to say, hey, give me back a list of X. So let's go on, you know what? Okay, let's do it now. Um, what else? Uh, what I actually wanted this for was um, MQTC broken. So let's public class uh, M broker, and um, I'm sure people will criticise me for not using the appropriate naming conventions and whatnot. Um, but whatever. Right, and we'll have a URL. Uh, oh, 
you know what we do? We need is a port. Um, port. But let's make sure that our uh, attributes gonna work here. Um, and we will go not we will not render the port. Okay. Yeah, that's not sitting well with me, but there we are, broken name. Right, so we've got mbroker, name, URL, port. Uh, let's go back to our generic link. No, you know what we'll do? We'll make a whole new one. Uh, generic, no, we won't, because that, what's the point of making a new one when you're building a generic list? That's silly. That's, uh, where were we looking? People.razor. So what if we go um, generic list of type? In broker. Cool. Now, I wonder. Just there it is. Yeah. Okay, we've got a new list of items. Um, items is equals people. No, I'm going to say in brokers. So again, you can do this from anywhere. You're not. You don't have to do it from here. Um, this could. This is where your services come in. So, is that something maybe we could do? Can we go if if uh, t? I haven't tested this. So that was probably a bit silly of me. T is a type. Type dot. Um, so, can I go? How do I do that? Hmm. I didn't consider that at all, did I? Let's have a look. Filter funk. Um, it's a type parameter. Object T. Let me have a quick look. Um, have a quick search of that. See if I can find some more information about it. Um, yeah, okay, so you can use the type of. Right. So let me go. Uh, uh, type of T dot. Question is, is this going to give us. Um, is that going to give us the name of the class or the name of the element? Yeah, there we go. A uh, good old. Uh, I find that really irritating that GitHub Copilot, but uh, like, because it it usually interrupts. Um, uh, what do you call it? It usually interrupts the in IntelliSense, which is really annoying. Um, let's have a look. That works. There we go. So what we can do is we can check and say if it's the type of M broker, we return one thing, um, and otherwise I could use a case here, but I'm not going to um, showing my uh, inexperience there because uh, whatever. Is it people or persons that we wanted? I think it was person. Person. So if it is a type of Person. Um, what am I doing? People, it is. Oh, I've adjusted that, haven't I? Yeah, it's person. What have I done? What have I done? Let's just use. Let's see if it really is reusable. And we'll put two of them on one page. Um, I wonder if the uh, functions will interfere with each other. They probably shouldn't because these elements are actually functionally different uh, once they get rendered, but we'll see, eh? Uh, I need to establish... Do I need a using statement? I do not. Yeah. So, um, and we'll go, if we set the value of items inside... So, there. And we're going to see people. 
<laughs> that makes no sense at all, does it? <laughs> so, uh, list of um, M brokers. Yep, new list of, and we will, yeah, sure. Well, that's, no, that's not important at all. Ah, uh, tried. Back in my day, there's no, uh, you don't get any prizes for second place, mate. Oh, uh, we oh, Jesus, how old am I? Um, okay, so I've got Victron stuff in the shed, so I'll say this is the servo broker. And it has a URL of, um, um, for the sake of it, and we've got a port, which, as we all know, 1883. So, let's copy and paste that. Broker and I've got, oh, I've got a home assistant one, so let's and whatever that'll do. That will do. Uh, my Docker server is at 10 and home assistant is at 128. Um, all right, I wonder if that's going to work. You watch this go tits up because I didn't check it before I made the video. Typical. Cool, so we've got a broker name, a URL. Now our port didn't render as we expected it shouldn't. So let's serve it. Search function's working, excellent. Um, let's try assistant, yeah, that's working. Make sure we can use both of them independently, and we can. So yeah, that's truly reusable then. Um, as the example shows, it casts it, uh, it, you know, you've got to cast the type like into the uh, into the table and um, and you don't have to if you're clever about the way that you build this you can make it truly reusable um, which I find to be really handy uh, this bit does not interest me at all I'm not sure why like I love it it looks pretty that's you know that's what you want you want people to look at it so that's really polished and nice but for the love of God I cannot I cannot find the time to sit here and learn it and I'm not interested in learning it but ironically learning it as I go because uh, I am trying to avoid having to do it. <laughs> so, got to love that. Uh, anyway, I'll, uh, I'll leave it at that. And um, I really sincerely hope uh, that the screen grabber is grabbing the Chrome window when I pop it up because I did start the screen grabber on Visual Studio and it doesn't always work when I change from one screen to another. Uh, it might be time to find a new piece of software there. Or I could uh, you know, go on that little journey of trying to make one myself, but that would be a calamity, I'm sure. Anyway, um, hopefully people find that to be helpful. I'm happy to share it if you're interested. Um, and yeah, good luck with Blazer.